That's it for us. Thanks for watching. Aaron Burnett out front starts now. All right, we have uh, breaking news right now. Welcome to Outfront. You're looking right now at a live picture of Cairo. Breaking news tonight, there are protesters that you are looking at near the U.S. Embassy. Uh, they have been rioting and setting fires in the street just a couple of moments ago. Uh, it, it's 1 a.m. in the morning there. Ian Lee is in Cairo for us tonight. He'll be joining me on the phone in just a moment. Um, but, but what we can tell you, what we've heard uh, has happened on the ground, is that Egyptian security had to uh, tear gas some of those protesters that you see there. And obviously, it looks calm at this uh, particular particular moment, but they had to tear gas. Security barbed, brought in barbed wire. We're hearing from a social activist who's there on the ground. Protesters then were able to push that down. Uh, and the fight, according again to CNN sources on the ground, then moved to a mosque in Tahrir Square, uh, where uh, there's also a, a tear gas about 200 meters from the U.S. Embassy. So that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, as we get Ian Lee ready, I am joined by Nick Kristoff here, columnist for The New York Times, a man who has spent a lot of time covering uh, the Arab spring and now obviously thinking about the tragedy that has happened over the past 24 hours both in Cairo and in Libya which uh, we're going to talk much more about in a moment but um, what is your uh, reaction to how this seems to be escalating well, I think the uh, thing that strikes me the most is that at least in the Libyan government, you have a real sense of people apologizing, of people trying to prevent it from happening again, mm -hmm. of trying to crack down on the perpetrators. In Egypt, you have a government that has been waffling, uh, that hasn't been living out to its responsibilities to protect the embassy and the people in it, and that has been simply appealing to the crowds. And, and let me bring in Ian Lee. We have Ian as well. Ian, what can you tell us your, 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 is happening on the ground right now uh, in, in Cairo outside the U.S. Embassy? Well, Aaron, right now we have protesters and police squaring off, seeing uh, Molotov cocktails, rock throwing uh, between the protesters and the police. Uh, being, uh, not many protesters, but definitely enough to uh, create a, a large disturbance and uh, and we're seeing uh, the two go head to head. These are definitely more your hardcore protesters that you see that are willing to go up into the front lines and really go in and attack the police, Aaron. And Ian, I know that you, you were reporting last night there had been flags destroyed, flags burned, American flags. Um, what What is your, your sense of how much worse it has gotten or has it get gotten worse? I mean, some people thought maybe this would 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 be uh, happen one day and then uh, burn burn out obviously does not appear to be the case well Aaron, this is this is definitely an escalation yes you know when they enter the embassy uh we we didn't see the police uh react but now we're seeing the police react and just and protests in the past when we see protesters and police start to square off and they start using tear gas using uh rubber bullets, protesters using Molotov cocktails, these things will can sometimes turn into a life of their own where you're going to see days potentially of clashes between protesters and police. And unfortunately, most of the times these turn very, very deadly, Aaron. Nick, when Ian says these most of the time turn very, very deadly, how much worse could this get? This certainly could get um, substantially worse. Uh, I mean, anytime you have a embassy there, an American embassy, you have these kinds of crowds and you have, you know, people competing to demonstrate their religious and patriotic credentials, then mm -hmm. you obviously worry about it, especially when the government does not seem to be standing up to, to do its job. And that, that is a key question here. I mean, this is a government that uh, uh, one of the clerics that supported the government um, was, was chanting, banish sleep from the eyes of the Jews. This is a man who uh, Mohammed Morsi, the president of Egypt, just named to the Human Rights Council in Egypt. Absolutely. And I mean, I kind of fear that we're sort of bit players in this, that what is really going on is to some degree a competition between the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Salafi elements, radical elements, and each trying to compete for uh, religious support, for uh, patriotic support, and that the Salafis are trying to attack, you know, that the U.S. Embassy may nominally be their target, but really they're trying to outflank uh, the government and show its vulnerability. Ian, how much uh, anti-American sentiment, as you've had a chance to report, to talk to people, to be there, how much anti-American? American sentiment specifically have you heard? 
Well, you know, it definitely is a lot among the crowd, obviously. The people are very, very upset about that film that that came out that they say insults the prophet. Uh, you know, I did talk to a few Egyptians on the street who said they were completely against uh, the scenes we're seeing right now on the streets of Cairo. They said that they want stability, they want security, they want their country to move forward. And they say these sort of things uh, don't help uh, Egypt move forward. And one thing I want to point out, too, is a lot of the time, these protesters, the ones that clash with the police, have a tendency to be uh, ultras from local soccer clubs that, that were very, uh, that a very strong presence during the revolution. They challenged the police during the revolution, right. and we still see them out there battling the police uh, most of the time during the clashes. Do, do you see security, though? I mean, we're talking about tonight, Ian, the, the, the tear gas um, that Egypt, Egyptian security forces are, are firing outside the U.S. Embassy. But have you seen a real security presence that they've really stepped up? or And what has ha, have the Americans done? Well, it definitely looks like the Egyptian security forces have stepped up their security crackdown. They're no longer allowing the protesters to go uh, by the embassy right now. You see the protesters and the police on their side throwing rocks at each other. Uh, you get your random Molotov cocktail. It was more tear gas. Um, definitely, it looks like the police are finally making a stand to protect, uh, or at least protect the area around the embassy. All right, well, thanks very much to Ian Lee. Nick Kristoff, thank you very much. Very lucky to have Nick with us tonight as well, a man who knows more about this than anyone. It has been a, a very shocking and confusing day. As you just saw the breaking news out of Cairo, but the U.S. is still reeling from attacks on American diplomats in Libya. U.S. officials telling CNN tonight that it's too early to determine the motive for the attack on the U.S. consulate in Libya. Earlier today, they had actually said it was premeditated. Now, when we first reported news of the deadly attack here last night, we didn't know how many people had been killed. Now we know that four Americans were murdered, including U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens. Now, the attack in Libya happened just hours after protesters first stormed the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, where they burned down the American flag. As that escalates in Cairo, in Libya tonight, America is responding. Within the past hour, we have confirmed two warships. Uh, American warships are on their way to Libya. U.S. Marines are en route. And the Defense Department is ramping up the number of drones. Now, American troops have been put on alert and may be moved at a moment's notice to protect U.S. embassies worldwide. That was a statement from the Pentagon today. And in Egypt tonight, CNN's Jamana uh, Karache is on Skype. Uh, she is from Tripoli. I, I apologize for that. And Chris Lawrence uh, is at the Pentagon. Chris, first of all, what can you tell us about the U.S. response specifically of uh, what the United States is now doing? Well, you mentioned it briefly, uh, Aaron. Right now, we've learned that two Navy warships are heading to the coast of Libya. Both of those warships are equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. That's very important because those Tomahawks are satellite guided and can be programmed to strike a very specific target. Now, when one got the order, it was just a couple hours away from Libya. The other was a few days sail. But we know that the U.S. has been conducting surveillance drone flights over Libya for several months. Today, we learned that that surveillance will now be much more focused on trying to find the insurgent cell that is responsible for this attack. So between the drone surveillance and these two ships, when they both get there, that gives the administration some options if and when it decides to strike back. Jamana, what's the response uh, on the ground in Libya to that, to, this, uh, to the fact that the United States is sending in warships, Marines? We have not heard a reaction yet, Aaron, from the government here. They have been busy this evening electing a new prime minister uh, amid uh, all this uh, chaos and uh, what seems to be a real disaster for the new Libya. Uh, but I have spoken with uh, ordinary Libyans to get their reaction to this news, and they seem to be uh, pretty divided. Some who I've spoken to said it is a good thing. Someone needs to take action. Someone uh, needs to take out uh, these extremist groups uh, that the government and uh, the West knows has been operating in eastern Libya, and uh, these people say that if their government uh, is unable, it seems to have been idle, uh, not doing much to uh, tackle this issue, then someone else should, and if the United States is going to do that, then it should. But others here uh, completely rejecting this, Aaron, saying uh, that they are going to try and turn Libya into another Iraq. And, and they've, they've said that, that explicitly.
about turning Libya into another Iraq. And how, how did they say that? I mean, so many people tonight are trying to understand what the U.S. should do, whether the U.S. should stay, whether Americans should support the U.S. staying. I mean, could you tell me a little bit more about those who were very anti, anti-U.S. in their sentiment? These people, Aaron, did say that they they do not agree with this attack. Uh, they uh, they really felt ashamed by what happened, saying that uh, diplomats here, foreigners in Libya, should be protected. But at the same time, they said they reject uh, the presence of any uh, foreign troops uh, or any sort of uh, outside military intervention uh, in Libya. They said. We've also heard that last year during the revolution, uh, there was unity in the stance of Libyans uh, who were um, fighting the regime of Muammar Gaddafi. They welcomed uh, the support of uh, NATO airstrikes, but said that they did not want to see any boots on the ground. Uh, so uh, at this point, this could be a real controversial issue here in Libya. Uh, we have to wait and hear, uh, see what the Libyan government officials uh, say about this. They have clearly said they are unable uh, to deal uh, with these right. groups on their own. And that, I mean, Nick Christoph, I, let me let me bring you in here. What you just heard Jumana say that that some people had told her tonight, regular Libyans, um, they don't want Americans in the military, right. and they want to turn Libya into the next Iraq. Yeah, but. I do think that Libya is profoundly different from Egypt in that respect. There's a real current of anti-Americanism in Egypt, and right. that's why the government is not responding. In Libya, on the other hand, there is clearly uh, a sense of deep mourning at what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a sense of responsibility. They may not want Americans to take action against the killers, but I think that, they, that the government really is going to go after them. It's going to do what it, it can, mm -hmm. uh, and that there is, um, you know, the, Libya may well be the most pro-American country in the region uh, in a way that is profoundly not true. Uh, and I'm a little skeptical about what American warships are going to be able to do in that kind of context. All right, so are, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but are you going in the direction of perhaps that's more of a political move? I mean, we, we have an election. Mitt yeah. Romney's been critical of Barack Obama's response. And so go ahead and go all in visibly with force. And If you have an attack and you don't have anything clear that you can do, you move warships to the area. It's a show of force, even if it doesn't resolve things. It, it does give you options. And I can, you can vaguely imagine some scenario in which we, through drones, get intelligence about where um, some Al-Qaeda-linked group may be yeah. and attack. But I think that's a little bit far-fetched. Uh, Chris Lawrence, what's your reporting in terms of what the, I guess, the organization is of the U.S. response? I mean, it did seem during the day, first they said premeditated, then they said they're not sure what the motive might be. Now there's warships going in. Um, was it disorganized or no, it just sort of dribble out that way? Well, as it so happens there in a lot of these cases, it does dribble out that way because first accounts are just rarely right in any circumstance. Mm. Uh, you know, and in this case, uh, the U.S. did fairly respond very quickly to the actual uh, situation there, you know, in Benghazi, in Tripoli with the diplomats. Uh, the Marine Fast Reaction Team was on the ground as of early this afternoon. Uh, they're going to be beefing up the security there at the embassy for the few American diplomats that are still left there. And of course, they're just keeping these other troops and units on alert right now, seeing perhaps where they may have to move them to embassies around the world if those embassies require some additional support. All right, Chris Lawrence, Jumana Karache, and Nick Kristoff, thanks to all three. Next, Senator Dianne Feinstein, the chair of the Intelligence Committee, on who she thinks is behind the attack in which four Americans were murdered. And the controversial film about the Prophet Muhammad that has sparked so much outrage. One of the actors in the film said she was conned into doing it. We have an exclusive interview with her out front next.